So if you are to consider the current divider rule, you can see that the current which is from the supply can be divided into two currents. The current entering resistor 1 and the current that is entering resistor 2, which is the same current that is going to flow out as our supply current. So the current divider rule states that we can calculate the current across resistor 1, which is referred to as I1, by using the opposite resistor on top. So it's going to be R2 over the sum of the resistors R1 plus R2 times that current which is being supplied, which is the total current. In the same sense, you can also calculate this current I2 by using also the opposite resistor to this current 2, meaning to say we are going to use R1 on top, the opposite resistor. That's R1 over the supply, uh, over the sum of the resistors times the supply current, which opposes what we had when we're dealing with the voltage divider rule. Dealing with the voltage divider rule, V1, you work with R1 on top, its voltage and its resistance, R1 plus R2 times the voltage that is given as the supply. V1 and R1, but for current, if this is I1, this is the opposite resistor. Opposite resistor, and it's a parallel combination that you're considering for the currents, where the sum of these currents I1 and I2 is supposed to give us what? IT, supply. So this same combination, this same metric that we are seeing, this presentation that we are seeing here can be given like this. It can be given like this, where you've got a resistor, another resistor in parallel like this. It's a parallel combination. Maybe you are used it to that way. Still one and the same thing. So we are still talking of one and the same thing there. You're having the supply current and this, another current branching, another current branching there. So let's say I've got R1 and this is R2. This will be I1 and this will be I2. This is the same concept that we are having, same formula that you use. You can subdivide these two currents from the supply. Meaning to say, I, uh, this total current is going to give us a sum. It's going to be taken from the sum of these two currents. It can be divided to give us I1 and I2 from the current divider rule. That is the idea there. All right, so let's check how these questions might be given in terms of our simplifications. How do we apply the current divider rule? Because we shall have this working with your theorems there. You're working with uh, other theorems, Norton, uh, Norton's theorem. You need to apply the current divider rule, any other part, to the superposition, whatever that you'll be given. They were given, determined by calculation from the given data of the network below the magnitude of the currents I1 and I2, I1 and I2, from the supply of 10 amps. How can we determine I1? So like I said, you use the opposite resistor on top. That is going to be R2 over the sum of these two resistors, R1 plus R2 times the supply, which is the total current. So we have got our R2, which is 15. So that's 15 over the sum of these resistors, 10 and 15. So that's 10 plus 15 times the supply current of 10 amps. So that was going to give us a current one, which is current I1, the current flowing in the resistor, in this resistor R1. So that's I1 was going to be 6 amps. With the same simplification, you can also calculate I2 using the opposite resistor on top. So it's going to be R1 over the sum of these two resistors times the supply current. So that means I2 is going to be R1 on top, that's 10, over the sum of the resistors, 10 plus 18. Okay, that was going to be uh, 10 plus 15. That's 15 there times the supply, which is 10 amps. Just like that, you are going to obtain I2. So that's I2 was going to give us uh, 4 amps. So like I said, these two currents 
the current I1 that we got as 6 amps and the current I2 that we got as 4 amps. The sum must add up to, to the 10. Apply also a Q-chop so you can tell you that 10 is entering, 10 is supposed to go out. So 6 plus 4 is what? It's 10. So if you do that now and you obtain, that is not what you're supposed to get. That means it's wrong. Redo your calculations. So it means our current divider rule is proving to be correct in its uh, simplification. So instead of doing other calculations from our Ohm's law, this and that, we can simply apply these rules. Current divider rule, where it is applicable. So this is what we're going to see uh, in uh, other uh, coming classes. Let us just try to work as much questions as we can.